But first, Scott Morrison began the week with a new poll that showed the Coalition moving up to 48-52 against Labor. And you know what that means. And the Coalition has surged to within striking distance. The Coalition has moved within striking distance. Bringing the Coalition within striking distance. Ooh, striking distance. <laughs> the last time the Libs were doing this well, they knifed their leader. <laughs> So will ScoMo get to remain in the top job? Don't ask me. Let's ask his high-vis vest. <laughs> it's not looking good. <laughs> now, now, even with the election being left as uncalled as your nan... Side note, call your nan. <laughs> this week saw the first bullshit argument of the Not Yet campaign. Prime Minister Morrison and opposition leader Shorten have traded verbal blows over, of all things, the time it takes to charge an electric car. Bill Shorten doesn't understand his own policy, thinking he could charge an electric vehicle with today's technology and what's available with eight, in eight to ten minutes. How long does it take to charge it up? It depends how what the original charge is, but it can take... Um... Uh, eight to ten minutes. Ah, yes. <laughs> the sound of fact makes when you pull it out of your ass. <laughs> so... So where... So where did Bill get this crazy idea that there are these super-fast chargers around Australia? Well, Channel 7 asked the Electric Vehicle Council. The latest chargers being built across Australia at the moment can recharge 400 kilometres within 15 minutes. In fact, the Electric Vehicle Council says Bill's short and sharp charge time is not wildly wrong. Ah, there it is. <laughs> Bill's new election slogan. Bill Shorten 2019. <laughs> not wildly wrong. <laughs> so... So Bill wants 50% of new cars electric by 2030. Q electric Carmageddon. He wants to say, see you later, to the SUV. It's a war on the weekend when it comes to the vehicle you drive and the vehicle you want to choose to do. 50% of those apprentices will be driving an electric vehicle under Bill Shorten. Uh, your Ute, gone. Uh, your V8, gone. Uh, your high-performance car, gone. But even the family shopping basket, gone. <laughs> take sides here, but if you have a V8 shopping basket, <laughs> you are part of the problem. <laughs> so while the Liberals spent the week ridiculing Bill Shorten's electric vehicles plan, what was Liberal Treasurer and former Energy Minister Josh Frydenberg saying just last year? Those people today who ridicule electric vehicles will probably be the ones who will be buying them in a decade's time. Yeah, to the Libs, electric cars are a bit like women in Parliament. Sure, it'd be nice if there were more of them, but if you set a target of 50%, we will go off our trolley! <laughs> Vegan activists, who are they and where do they get their protein? The answer... <laughs> the answer is one and the same. A handful of nuts. <laughs> And this week, they were out in force. There have been multiple arrests, sabotoirs have been invaded and major roads shut down as vegan activists stage nationwide protests. More than 100 protesters shut down where Flinders and Swanston streets meet, calling for action on animal rights. Melbourne streets flooded with vegans, or in other words, Melbourne. <laughs> But with the protests spreading out across the country, Bob Catter had had a gutful. Now, these people, they don't love animals. They hate humans. They are human haters. Their consistent pattern of behaviour is anti-human. They don't want to save the planet. Right? They want to close down the coal mines. Uh, two things. Um, coal, not a food. Uh, but if it was, totally vegan. <laughs> So what did these human-hating, vegan humans actually want? I'm here joined by Kristen, who's one of the organisers. Kristen, tell us, this has been months in the planning. That's correct. Um, we want to draw attention to the film Dominion that was released a year ago. That is a pretty full-on <laughs> way to recommend an old movie to people. It's like, stop, stop traffic, stop! Have you seen Toy Story? <laughs> oh, oh, once you see it, you will never eat Lego again. Oh. <laughs> The NBN hit a major milestone this week. A not-so-happy birthday. The NBN turns 10, but as the government claims success, the watchdog says it's too expensive. 
Happy 10th birthday, NBN. And just like any Australian 10-year-old, you're expensive, temperamental and seriously underperforming 10-year-olds in China. <laughs> And this week, the Murdoch family got a taste of its own medicine with a 20,000-word expose in the New York Times. The New York Times magazine has a blockbuster of a story on Rupert Murdoch's media empire. And some of the stories yeah. are pretty juicy, right? After a fall that happened in the bathroom on Lachlan's yacht, he very, very badly had injuries to his back and his head, had to be airlifted from the boat to hospital. Or, as Fox News put it, Handsome billionaire enjoys scenic midnight helicopter ride. <laughs> and with the old man seemingly on his last legs, the fight was on for the family business. It is also a story of a sibling rivalry between Rupert Murdoch's sons, James and Lachlan, who were constantly competing with each other in a kind of Game of Thrones type succession. I don't know. If it was really like Game of Thrones, then Rupert wouldn't have fallen over in the toilet. One of his sons would have gone into the toilet and shot him through the heart with a crossbow. <laughs> Spoiler alert, that happens. <laughs> but I think that the guy was onto something, though, thinking this was more of a TV family thing. Because um, I read the article. Let me try and explain it. Um, it's a story... Wait, I can, I can do better than this. Here's a story of a former Aussie who liked leaders to be listening to his views. He owned outlets round the world, watched by millions. He also owned Sky News. <laughs> Choosing leaders for his readers and deciding which prime ministers to dump. He hacked the phones of missing girls and pushed for Brexit and gave us Donald Trump, his son James. He took the blame as the pie man took the blows from Wendy Deng. Lachlan went back home to Australia and fucked up Channel 10. <laughs> then old Rupert got a spinal hematoma on his way to take a leak on Lachlan's yacht. The family, they all gathered round his deathbed to see who'd got the lot. But he recovered and the brothers were divided So Rupert played them off to see who'd win the house Then he sold off half the farm For 70 billion He sold it to a mouse Now poor James is on the outer dump for Lachlan Who's more right-wing than his father So we'll see Who will die first Rupert Murdoch or democracy, the Murdoch bunch, a bunch of Murdochs. That's the way they behave, the 